All right, we're checking our valve to valve clearance here. For, uh, I, I know it's good for these. These are N4 cams, which are bolt ends, so we have plenty. Testing for another set of cams. So, arbitrary, I picked Andrew's N8 cams, which have a 226 top dead center lift on the intake and a 216 top dead center lift on the exhaust. Still far, fairly mild cams. Uh, so let's go over this. How you're going to check it without it without a uh, fixture? All right. So first up, you need to check your stem protrusion, which is with the valve seated. Now I put a little bit of grease on these valves to keep it so they don't fall out when I'm doing this. So kind of hold them in place. So I already know that these are two 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 point zero one zero on the intakes. So we're going to take 2.010 and subtract uh, 226 thousandths from it. That's going to give us 1.784. So we're going to set our dial, in, dial, dial calipers at 1.784 inches. Then we'll fudge it a little bit. We'll go to 1.785, so that's close enough. Now you're just going to push the valve down until it opens and stops on the spring pad there. Then we're going to measure the exhaust, which is 2.040 minus 216 is going to give us uh, 1.824 inches. And same thing, you're just going to Push the exhaust valve down until it opens and stops on the spring pad. And that's it there. So that's going to give us our va both valves open slightly there at TDC lifts where they need to be. And what you're looking for is uh, the clearance between both valves right here. You need at least uh, at least eighty thousandths. Now, all I've done is stack some long feel gauges together and measured them. We're exactly eighty thousandths here, and then you're just going to slide them down in between there. So you've got plenty of room in there. Now, what you're looking for is that clearance there. So, just for hypothetically, say they were really close. Say they were within fifty thousandths. Now, you got a couple of things you can do there. Well, basically two different things. This is a check. You know, if, if you have equipment, it makes it easier. So typically what I do, if they're really close, you have a couple of things you can do. You can seat the exhaust valve slightly deeper. Uh, not too deep, slightly deeper. You don't want it too deep because you end up shrouding the valve and then having to re-contour around the exhaust seat there for better flow basically blending the blending the combustion chamber into the into the seat area which isn't a bad idea to do anyway or you can grind the head of the valve down slightly sometimes you can bevel this outside edge on the, on the edge of the exhaust valve as long as you maintain a correct margin on the valve to get your clearance now, what you're looking for is at least 80 thousandths between valves, prefer preferably more. So, what you got going on here, your exhaust valve is closing. Just remember, your exhaust valve is on the closing side. Your intake valve is on the open side, so that they're both open slightly at, at this point. So... And, of course, clearance between the valves. Uh, and really, that's, that's basically it. If you're keeping, the, keeping your clearances right, like I said, you'd want preferably more, more clearance. But you can only, it, this type of cylinder head, you can only get so much in there with this type, this type of head. Or valve configuration because your valves are 
Yeah, they're both opening at the same time. Now these are these are N eight. I did a measurement for N eights, which are still fairly mild cams, nothing wild. Typically, you get in the like uh, just say N nines. Andrews N nines or something in that range where you have tremendous TDC lifts. Uh, that's where you run into problems with valve to valve. Uh, you, you can, if you're doing cylinder heads and you know that you don't really need massive exhaust valves in there most of the time, <clears throat> typically what happens is I learned this the hard way a long time ago that I used to do these massive uh, exhaust valves and really if your exhaust is flowing within 60% of the intake you're, you're pretty good you used to overdo the exhaust side quite a bit now that's for a smaller size motor once you start going up in tremendous size motors you know of course you need a slightly larger exhaust valve but nothing huge I've done tests with them a long time ago and I've run I've run uh, really big intakes, like old Sportster heads. Then ended up, you know, I've done these where I've put uh, big twin size seats or actually 1940s on the intakes. And you still use 1200 size exhaust valves and make good power with them. And it just makes it easier and not worrying about having valve to valve too close with some massive exhaust valve that I didn't need. But anyway, that's that's the quick and easy way to check valve to valve clearance. You, you don't need any really special tools. You don't need a fixture to do it. Measure your measure your stem protrusion and then subtract your EDC lift. Open the valve that much, and then measure valve to valve. And that's that's in a nutshell. That's it. Anyway, thanks for watching, uh, guys. Take care. Have a great Christmas coming up, and uh, have a great week. Watch out for drunks on the road. <laughs>